Hey guys, hope you're doing well. In this tutorial, I wanted to go over how to create a procedural transparent gradient fade effect. I'll show you the base of the effect and then on top of that, I'll include some additional kind of stylization you could do to that fade effect. Now one last thing before we get started is that this effect works both in cycles and EV, but with EV you're gonna have some limitations with the volumetric effects. Now to get started, you want to select the object that you want to apply this transparent gradient fade to and go to the shading tab. And as you can see, we already have an image texture applied as well as a texture coordinate and mapping node. Now to recreate this effect, the first two nodes that we will need is to copy over this texture coordinate as well as this mapping node down here. And we want to switch off from UV texture coordinates to generated. As you can see here, that way we get this nice gradient over here. With UV, that wouldn't really work as well. Now once we have that taken care of, the next node we want to add is a separate X, Y, Z and connect the vector to the vector. And now as you can see, we have several options in which gradient we can choose. The one you choose is your preference, but for this tutorial, I'll just be sticking with X. And if you play around with the slider for the respective coordinate, you can already see how this animation will build out. Now from there, we want to add a color ramp to give a little bit more control in how tight the transition between transparent and the actual shader is. So I'm going to move this X location mapping coordinate a little bit to the left. So we have the gradient meeting more in the center. And I'm going to drag this color ramp and expand it out so we have a little bit more fine control of the transition between where the gradient turns into transparent versus the actual shader. So I want to just tighten it up a little bit as you can see here. And from linear you want to change it to ease. That way you have a smoother transition. If you want a hard cutoff you can set it to constant. That way you're just going to get a sharp cut. But if you want a gradual cut you can switch that to ease and once you connect the color of the color ramp to the alpha of the BSDF you can see that we just got the base of the effect completed but we want to add more to this now the one thing I want to go over before I get to the next part is that if you don't have this transparency showing correctly you want to go into your render properties change your render engine back to EV if you're not on EV already go into the material properties and make sure that the settings in the material properties is set to either alpha hashed or alpha blend. I'm pretty sure the default is opaque and as you can see, we are not getting the desired look for the effect. So I'm gonna just change it back into alpha hashed. And from there, the way that we can stylize this gradient transparency effect is by adding some procedural noise. And the way that we do that is we add a mix RGB and place it between the mapping and the separate XYZ. And here's a little pro tip is that anytime you are adding noise to a vector, that is distorting the vector mapping. So we just drop that in, in the middle right there. And then after that, we wanna add a noise texture and attach the color into color two. And for the mix node, we wanna change it to linear light wait for it, wait for the shader to compile. And you could play around with the noise texture settings to get some different results. I like to bring up the detail, bring up the scale just a tiny bit and roughness and distortion. I don't really change. And as you can see, we added an extra level of detail to this effect. If we move the X location slider left and right, we get this more rough looking dissolve effect that looks more natural than just a simple gradient ramp. Now, if you want the noise to be more intense, you could bring up this factor slider. And if you want it to be unaffected by the noise, you bring this factor slider back down to zero. So by manipulating this linear light, you can get a different intensity of the noise distortion. Now I'm just gonna leave it at 0.6 because I think that's a good medium between having it a straight gradient and a good amount of noise. Now the next thing is that you can control this gradient through keyframes and the shader node. But a way that I found easier is that you can add empty and attach the empty to the value of this node location x value. 
So to do that, you want to right click on this value, add a driver, and you want to attach it to an object, which will be the empty. And as you can see, when we move the empty left and right, it changes the gradient. And I just want to inverse this value of the empty so that it moves with the gradient, not the opposite way. And as you can see, we got that taken care of. Now, the last bit of detail to put a cherry on top is I like to play with volumetrics. So to get started with that, we want to add a principled volume node and attach it into the material output. Now the issue here is that the volumetric isn't falling under the same path of the gradient transparent transition. So to fix that, we want to plug in the color into density. And as you can see, we can't really see the result here because the color ramp decreased the density. So in order to fix that, we want to add a math node in between, change the function to multiply and increase the number to let's say 10 to see if that's a good result maybe even a higher number like 20 or even just cranking it up a lot like 100 just play around with this number just whatever works for your particular object now i'm just going to rotate this hdri so we have a better idea of the way the light is falling now one thing that you also want to experiment with is the color of the volume to make it a little bit more seamless with the transition between the solid shader and the volume shader. And after that, you are done. Now, the one thing you want to watch out for is if you have any of these black spots where the transparency is supposed to be. And how to fix that is by going into your render properties, light paths, and changing the number from its default eight and so let's say a higher number like 20. And after that, you can see that the issue has disappeared and we now have a flawless effect. Thanks for sticking to the end. I'm going to have this project file for free linked in the video description down below. Even though this project file is free of charge, it is pay what you wish. So if you would like to support me with a dollar or two, it would be greatly appreciated. That being said, I hope you got something out from this video. And please subscribe so you don't miss out on my future videography and VFX content.